All right, so in the previous video, we talked about how to create a pocket routine on a closed pocket. We used a half inch end mill. We learned how to do a helical entry and then work from the inside to the outside. We went halfway on the depth, then within 20 thousandths of the finished depth, then a final depth cut, and then a final pass on the wall. So now, if we have an open pocket, would you still pick a pocket routine? And let me show you what I mean by open pocket. I'm going to change the level. This is a pocket that runs off the end or is open on one end of the pocket. Would you still use a pocket routine or is there another option? So let's talk about that. All right, so I'm going to start by turning on the level manager and I'm going to activate the level that shows the wireframe that was used to create this part. All right, so then I'm going to take this pocket routine that was used on the closed pocket. I'm going to right click on it, hold my right mouse button and drag it right on top of the arrow. Then I let go of the button and I click on copy after. So now I have an identical operation down below and the only thing I'm going to change is the geometry portion of it. So the chain one was from our closed pocket so I'm going to right click in this field and click on rechain all. Then I'm going to pick on chain and I'm going to select this blue outline of that pocket and click OK. OK. Then we're going to regenerate all dirty operations and you can see it does an identical pocket routine. It does a helical entry. It works from the center outward. It only goes halfway down on the first pass then almost to finish depth. Then it takes a final pass to clean up the floor and again to clean up the walls. All right now if you look at this over the top okay let's zoom in and we're going to turn on quick verify. Now you can see on the corners right here there's going to be material that was not removed because of the boundaries of the pocket it did not allow that tool to get all that material. Okay so Another thing is, we're wasting time doing the helical entry. Since we have an open pocket, we should be starting the end mill on the outside of the part. So let's talk about another option you have there. All right, so let's turn off the back plot. Let's zoom out a little bit. And we're going to move the red arrow down. Then we're going to right click and we're going to pick contour. Then we're going to pick partial and put a check mark in weight. Then we're going to select the far side of the pocket and we're going to come around to the front. Okay. Now we're not going to pick this front leg. We're just going to select the geometry starting at the open end of the pocket and then ending at the open end of the pocket. Then we click OK. We select tool. We're going to select the same tool here. And let's go ahead and put a check mark in force tool change and wrap it retract. Okay. Then in cut parameter we're going to leave computer. Compensation direction is left. Tip compensation is tip. We're going to select none on a roll cutter. Internal corner radius at zero. Stock to leave on walls zero. Stock to leave on floors zero. Contour type 2D. Then for now we're just going to go to linking parameters. We're going to select absolute and we're going to clip on depth we're just going to let it snap to the bottom of the pocket and it automatically populates it minus 0.750. Then the feed plane I usually go to 0.1. So let's see what that looks like. Click OK. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, zoom in a little bit and then we'll click on back plot and you can see the tool starts at 100 downs above the part. So we roll it you can see. Roll it back and then we play it comes straight down to finish and it goes right up against the wall and it just makes one pass finishing the floor and finishing the wall. Now obviously that is not what we want. We want to make some roughing passes, leave some stock on the wall and leave some stock on the floor. So what we need to do is go back into parameters and first of all we're going to click on depth to cuts, activate it and we're going to enter 
then also keep tool down now just by doing that let's see how that changed it we regenerate all dirty operations and let's do a backplot so now it does a pass at minus 375 and without coming up it goes straight down and does a final pass but it still doesn't remove the material in the middle of the pocket so we need to go back into the parameters and we click on multi passes activate it and let's start with three passes at 200 thousandths apart and we're also gonna click keep tool down and click OK regenerate dirty operations and let's watch this let's click play so it starts in the middle then does a 200,000 step over and then goes up against the wall and it does that again at a final depth 200,000 over up against the wall all right so that's starting to look better but we're going to need to leave material on the floor and on the walls for a finish pass so we'll go back into parameters and right here where it says finish we're going to click one pass and we're going to leave 20 thousandths for a finish pass and we're only going to do that on the final depth okay then on the depth cuts on the finish cuts we're going to take one pass and we're also going to leave 20 thousandths for finish and then we'll click OK then we we'll click back plot we click play you can see we are at minus 365 roughing all the material out then it does it again at Z minus 730 then it finishes the floor and it makes one final pass on the wall alright so the next thing I recommend changing is those long lead-ins and lead-outs there's a lot of cycle time and air time wasted there so what we do is we go into parameters we select lead-in lead-out and you can see on the lead-in move we're making a tangent move of a half inch and then an arc in of a half inch and the same in on the exit we have a half inch tangent move and a half inch radius move so we're going to change the lead-in to a perpendicular move of 0.1 and we're gonna get rid of the radius and then we'll copy that to the right so on the exit it's also going to make a hundred thousandths perpendicular move away from the geometry now the only thing we want to make sure of is that we adjust the contour the start of the contour we click on extent and we're gonna adjust that start by at least 375 thousandths that's 125 thousandths longer then half the diameter of the tool and we're going to copy that to the exit side we're also going to extend the contour of the exit before we do a hundred thousandths perpendicular move away from the geometry all right and then let's go into cut parameters and we're going to change compensation type from computer to where and so now that's going to work together with lead in and lead out on that perpendicular move where it's going to post out a G41 on the lead in move and a G40 on the lead out move. All right, so then we click OK, we regenerate, and let's go ahead and click on the top view. We zoom out just a little bit, we click on back plot. Alright, so notice the gap between the tool and the part, and that's because we extended the entry and the exit by 375,000. So that was considering half the diameter of the tool plus an eighth of an inch. So that's, so that's roughly an eighth of an inch. So let's uh, look at the back plot. You can see the perpendicular entry and exit, so there's not a whole lot of wasted time right there. Now, every time it enters and exits there will be a G41 and a G40 posted out but that's okay it only matters when the tool is actually finishing up against the wall where it will machine your final dimension alright so that covers open-ended pockets hope that helped you thanks for watching